Requiem for a Dream movie thoughts. So I watched this with a good friend of mine, and she pointed out something that I'm not sure I entirely caught before. The Jennifer Connelly character mentions that she does have money. I mean, she says, you know, that's all I have to give money, apparently. Or even if you don't, you know, read that as meaning that, there is the thing about, you know, her parents have money. And yet, Jared Leto is always stealing his mother's television for drug money. I'm thinking they don't want to have you know, they, they see the television as an infinite supply of readily available cash, whereas, you know, her parents might actually cut her off, as they do later on. I think the leap from Pi does a fantastic job at just being really, really creepy. You know, he's not that unattractive of a guy speaking as a straight man, but I don't know, I think it's the talking with food in his mouth and chewing with his mouth open and constantly eating, he's like constantly eating at the table, you know, there's just, and another that demands mentioning is I believe his name is David Keith, but I always mix him up with Keith David. I think Keith David is the white guy who was the father in Daredevil, and Keith David, David Keith, is the black guy who oozes badass from every single pore. As many black men in the business tend to do. I've seen him play sympathetic characters, but here you would never have thought. Just the, the grin, that laughter, you just, you know, you're practically yelling at Jennifer Connelly, get away, that is not where you want to be, you know. And, you know, there are, are probably people like that, you know, who, you know, he, he knows not to take any of the stuff himself, you know, he's not an addict, but he takes advantage of addicts, you know, you can imagine that in addition to just, you know, girls who are addicts, there might also be, you know, girlfriends of abusive addict boyfriends who get forced by said boyfriend to have sex with him so that, you know, the boyfriend can score some dope. I think one of the few bad moments in filming and editing is when the camera seems to need to change. It, when Jennifer Connelly walks out after having had sex with the psychiatrist, the camera is in front of her. You know, it's that rig where it's, you know, it's attached to her and she's walking and you see her face and you see him slowly closing the door behind, you know, nice detail. When she walks into the elevator, it very briefly goes to a camera rig that's attached to the back of her instead of the front of her. It's a little awkward. That's one of the few times where it's really... You know, and, and I love the way the drugs, you know, the shooting up sequences are handled. And that sequence, the, I think... Aronofsky refers to it as hip-hop editing when they're making money off the dope, you know, and it's kind of these normal sounds are making music, sort of. I think the ending to each character is pretty good. I suppose it's one has to be the weakest. It's maybe Marlon Wayans. I think it's Marlon. There are too many Wayans. But that's not a secret. 
there, there's this thing of, you know, he wants to become something, you know, to make his mama proud. And that does make sense. And I think that is, you know, that fits with that environment. And the... But, but yeah, it's just the other three are a bit stronger, you know, Connolly clutching the dope in her hand there, and Leto missing the arm that got infected, and Sarah, you know, maybe she's happier there. You know, it, it seems like it, because, you know, in her imagination, she is there, and she is, you know, she's now lost to the rest of the world, it seems. Anyway, if there's anything else you want my thoughts on, down below.